Yasu, y'all. Today's lesson is all about a form of literature that you probably heard of before, the epic. Now, even if you've never heard of an epic poem before, you've probably heard the word epic and you know exactly what it means, long. Epics started out being so long because they were originally intended to entertain audiences of ordinary people sitting around a fire at night. This was before TV, radio, the internet, or even electricity. So once it got dark, there wasn't much else to do except listen to stories and imagine them in your head. Kind of like making your own movie. These stories were recited each night by a special poet who had memorized the entire work. Different cultures call this poet by different names. In Europe, he was sometimes called a bard, while in West Africa, he or she was known as a griot or a jelly. Other cultures entrusted these stories to visionaries, oracles, or other community members known to have special powers or abilities. Epics began to develop after human society moved from small tribal or family units into larger empires or nations. These larger societies were made of many unrelated individuals and families, including some that had been enemies before and some that had been conquered by the new country. The epics attempted to overcome these old divisions and grudges by giving the new nation or empire a sense of common history and culture. Because they developed in this stew of different groups coming together, epics usually combine characteristics of earlier genres of literature, like mythology and didacticism. Like myths, epics usually use supernatural, supernatural events and characters to explain why the way the world is the way it is. However, instead of explaining natural phenomena, epics have a political edge. They often explain how the nation or the empire was founded. Epics also resemble didactic literature because they try to teach moral and political lessons. Usually the purpose of an epic is to justify or glorify the whole society by showing that it was founded by an epic hero. Usually the main character, this brave yet flawed hero may be human or part immortal. He's usually male due to the sexism of most early societies, and he serves as an example of how the ideal citizen of the nation should behave. As he sets out to found the new country, he gets help from supernatural beings and may have, have some magic powers of his own. However, he cannot and does not found the nation all by himself. His personality and adventures show other citizens how to think, act, and believe, especially as they deal with adversity and meet people from other cultures. Sometimes the hero knows that he's trying to establish a new nation, Sometimes he doesn't, but it's still his destiny. Either way, the epic about him often follows a story structure popularly known as the hero's journey. If you'd like to know more about this structure, you can watch the video in the description box. There's actually a whole series of videos with the author Joseph Campbell that you might find enlightening. Most epics were also originally composed as poems whether at the oral stage or when they were finally written down, epic poems usually follow rigid patterns of pitch, emphasis, and silence. These patterns are known as meter. Many meters were based on the natural language or the natural rhythms of the original language, but they were also just unnatural enough to make it easier for the poet to memorize the many thousands of lines he needed to recite every night. See the videos in the links above for more info about meters and about reading poetry. So with all this in mind, try to listen to at least a little bit of each epic you read in the original language or in another translation. 
As you do, imagine what it would be like to listen to parts of this each night, circled around a fire with your family and your friends. How might you feel breathing in the smoky night air and looking up at the stars? What would you think about how to behave and about the founding of your country? And what do you feel and think now as a 21st century person reading this work from another time and place? These are the questions to ask yourself as you read any epic. 